Come up here and show us how to render a PDF invoice with Meteor in React, right? All right. And, and then after that, uh, we'll have Michael Jackson come up here and do some live coding for us and obvious entertainment because he's that awesome. So I'll turn it over to Paul now and uh, we'll get started. Thanks, Paul. Everybody. Do you want this on here or you want this Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Wonderful. Um, first off, thank you for the opportunity to present here. I'd like to thank Chris German, as well as the team at Intuit. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity. So what I'm going to be presenting tonight is an application I built with the React Meteor stack. React is, of course, for the um, front end, the client, and then I'm using Meteor for the server side. Um, I'm also using Meteor Chef's base. Um, it's a place to start for Meteor applications that uh, basically follows the, app, the uh, Meteor recommended application structure. So this is the editable, downloadable invoice. Uh, my agenda is going to be to cover an introduction. From there, I'm going to go over the build, and then we're going to um, also have a demo. I'm sorry, demo was second. Um, so who am I? I'm an independent developer. I am a salesman turned coder. So after an unfulfilling career in sales, I found my passion, which is coding. And um, I've been doing that now for about a year and a couple months. And um, below, you're going to find my wife and um, son, Weston. So I'm a husband and father. And um, my wife, Marin, if you're listening, um, thank you so much for the support. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, so moving on, who is Build a Client for Services? OK, I see some hands. <laughs> Good. Hopefully, um, at some point in the career of every um, developer, you have to bill a client, and there's many different approaches to that. When I started, I used the Pages application, um, which is just part of the Mac suite, and um, basically took those pages, printed that to PDF, sent it to my client, and then they had to send me a check in the mail. I didn't like that process. I felt it was disjointed. Um, I just never really liked it. So that was basically the inspiration behind this. Um, so we're going to jump to a demo, and I'm going to flip over and show you guys the app itself. So let me go ahead and log in here. And what I've done is create something to hold invoices. So with this, we can add an invoice to the collection. This will bring up our invoice page. So I do a little bit of browser history push with React Router to get us over here. And then um, there's a couple features I want to talk about when it comes to this component. The first is responsiveness. So these sections here, this invoice section, uh, my information over here, as well as bill to all these guys, will respond to the screen size. So if somebody's on a mobile device or they're playing around with a browser like I am now, not only will these sections grow and shrink, but they will also wrap. So if you're on a very small display, everything wraps um, appropriately um, for a good mobile experience. The next is the um, fields. These are all editable. So we can go in here and let's say um, the hours I spent is not 15. Let's say it's 20. We hit update and we'll have everything updated with our amount due, um, all the totals on this side. You don't see any um, that stuff change really um, noticeably. And that's simply because there's no refreshes or re-renders with um, React. I am re-rendering this component when we do that update, but it happens so quickly you don't really see it. Um, but let's say I want to give a little bit of a discount. We'll knock this down to $80, update, and then immediately all this stuff reflects. Um, so that goes over the ability to edit that invoice. Now for the downloading part. When I hit download, I'm taking this section inside this box passing it over to the server, rendering it on the server, and then converting it to a PDF. And then, as you're going to see, the PDF comes out with the same format. This can be extremely tricky, guys, to get a uh, PDF to have the same display as a React component. And that's simply because your CSS that you use to render a component does not necessarily follow through to printing. You need to use an app media print CSS query and basically redefine all your CSS again inside of that. Um, so with that, let's move back to the presentation, and I want to cover a couple items here. So the app build, um, I'd like to get into more detail than I can, but I've only got 15 minutes and I've got to talk like I'm on lightning. So 
I want to go over my inspiration, what I enjoyed most, and then what was the most challenging. Um, so inspiration. A while back, this was probably maybe a month or a month and a half ago, I needed to bill um, a client and um, I didn't want to use the invoicing system that I had been using. I had recently received an email from PayPal with this new tool that they wanted me to try out and so I looked into it and I was astonished. The tool made it really easy to work with an invoice. It actually gave you an invoice similar to what I created here where you could just edit the fields. You weren't inputting stuff into some other form and then eventually creating an invoice and then having to decide is that the format I want. You were actually um, inputting that information into the invoice that was going to be the final product. Um, so that along with Meteor Chef, so I'm not only using Meteor Chef's base um, as a starting point for the app, I'm also using one of their tutorials. So the founder, Ryan Glover, um, great guy, very receptive if you ever need help or um, feedback on something. Um, I highly recommend Meteor Chef. All of his tutorials and even his base app um, uses React for the front end and Meteor for the back end. Um, but he put out a tutorial snippet called HTML to PDF. This gave me inspiration. Along with the final inspiration, which was build clients for my own app. You know, I know I can go through PayPal now, but I'm still a little disjointed. My client's receiving something from PayPal. It just didn't feel like I was um, providing the service that I felt I should. Uh, being a web developer, why don't I have my own application that supplies an invoice to the customer? Um, so what I enjoyed most, uh, converting a React component to PDF, we're going to get to that. I just thought that that was super cool. Um, also converting a PDF to Base64. You know, once we have a PDF, we have a blob. We don't really want to be throwing a blob back and forth between the server and the client. We want to convert that to um, a Base64 to do that. And then lastly, at Media Print, I'm going to hint at what I did and that is using um, Flexbox. So converting a component to PDF. I'm gonna dive into some code here, so hopefully this doesn't get too slow or put people to sleep. <laughs> but we're gonna have a module, and that module is gonna have three methods in it. Um, we're gonna first get the HTML, we're gonna second generate a PDF from that HTML, and then third, we're gonna take the PDF and convert it back to a um, uh, base64 string. So here's the module itself. At top, I'm gonna to import React's DOM server. This is gonna give us the ability to um, server-side render the component. We're also gonna import an NPM package, and that MP MP uh, NPM package is called HTML to PDF, and this basically allows us to convert HTML into PDFs. And we're also gonna import Node's file server, or file system. Um, so jumping down to the bottom, I want to go to our export. We're going to be exporting generate component as PDF. This is going to receive options that we pass it at another point in the app. I'm not really going to get into the options here, but I destructure them above. So when we get to this um, handler method, we'll go through them at that point. Um, but because we got different processes in here that work at different times and different speeds, I wanted to wrap everything in a promise. So we wrap everything in a promise to have access to the resolve and reject methods, and then we return our handler, and our handler basically decides what we do next. So jumping up above into our handler, we destructure those options. So these options that were passed in were basically the component, the component's props, and the file name. And that along with the promise are what we receive uh, for this handler method. Uh, we're going to set module, which we declared up above as global, we're going to set this equal to the promise. So that way, anywhere within this module, we can reject or um, resolve it. Um, so let's try to get our HTML. To get our HTML, we hold this in a variable, and we run the get component as HTML method. This method is going to receive the component props. Um, so we're going to jump up to that. And basically, this is where we do some um, server-side rendering. So I'm going to do try catches for these. And we're going to try to return uh, the component and props rendered. If we are able to render these guys, then we can move on. We've got our HTML. If not, we're going to catch the exception, and then we're going to reject the module. And this exception is basically going to be passed eventually to the client, um, but first to the server, and we're going to have a server error associated with it, and then it's going to get thrown back to the client. Um, so we've got our HTML. We've got our file name that was passed in. Um, let's move on to generate the PDF. This is where we get to use the NPM package. And so what we're doing here is another try catch. We're going to take the PDF package and we're going to use its dot create method. This method takes a couple arguments. The first would be the HTML and the second is an object with some properties regarding the formatting. 
So we want this thing in a letter format, and I put some slight margins around it, um, 0.1 inch, just to give us some padding. Um, and then we're going to apply a to file method, and that takes in the file path. And the file path we're just creating here with a template string and then using the file name um, that we passed in earlier. And this to file method also accepts a callback. So in the callback, we're going to look for an error or response. If we get an error, we're just going to reject the module. If we do not get an error, we're going to go ahead and resolve. When we resolve, we're going to resolve with the file name equal the file name. Um, the base64 string equal to a base64 string. We're going to get this in a moment. I know this is another method in here. Um, but following that, then we're going to delete it from Node's file system with an fs.unlink. So moving up to our last method, we've got our component props. We're going to pass that in. Oops, I went backwards. Um, we're going to take our path, and we're going to try to hold the red path. So we're going to read this with Node's file system in this variable called file. Once we have that in the variable file, we're going to pass that to a buffer. We're going to do the two string method of the buffer, and we're going to get our base64 string. So now we're not messing with a blob. We can have a string that we can pass back to the client. And this is what ultimately is passed um, in the object that goes back to the client when we resolve. Um, if for some reason this doesn't work, we're going to catch the exception and reject the module and then pass that exception on so we know the error. Um, so at media print and flex CSS, with my initial attempt at this, I kept Bootstrap. So I'm using Bootstrap for the lot application. Um, React Bootstrap is what I'm using. That is basically React components that are made with Bootstrap styling. So it gives you a really quick and easy way to get um, some Bootstrap styling into a React application. However, Bootstrap is over a thousand lines. And rather than try to hack through the thousand lines to see what I needed to get the page to display properly in a PDF, I thought there's got to be another way. Even if I can, you know, knock this thing down to 500 lines, I'm not going to, you know, restate 500 lines in my at media print um, media query. So I looked at Grid FS. I would have really, or Grid um, uh, CSS would have really have liked to use Grid, but unfortunately, it's still experimental. Um, you would have to have special settings in Chrome enabled um, experimental features as well as it did not play well with the HTML to PDF NPM package, so I had to abandon Grid. Um, but hopefully next year, early next year from what I hear, Grid should be ready, and I believe it's going to revolutionize how we do um, styling in CSS. It, it is just astonishing. Um, so Flex, uh, kind of um, related to Grid, not as complex, but uh, for what I needed to do, got the job done. And really 90% of what I did on what you saw with the invoice was done in 12 lines of flex. So it just blew me away. Um, so I want to go over those 12 lines. With flex, you're going to create two, um, two items or selectors that you're going to use for your CSS. The first is a container. This will hold the items. You give this a property such as display flex. This just allows it to be flexible. The direction you want it to flex in, whether it's a row or column, whether you want it to wrap around the screen if you lose some um, screen size. Uh, justify content, put space between if you need it. So let's say I have um, two 200 pixel divs. Um, I want there to be space between those so it's spread out. If you define fixed width um, divs, this space between comes in um, M, M to play. Align item center, this just gets everything centered inside of the flex container. And then align items top, this just aligns everything to the top when it starts to wrap. So if you don't have it aligned to the top when it wraps, it starts to get disjointed. Um, flex item, this receives a couple properties. The first being flex, this just enables a shrink and a grow capability. And so the first one here means one times grow. Second one means one times shrink. And then auto just looks for any either default size that you want to start with, or it just uses whatever size is based off of the content that you have. Um, so if you have two flex items, and you have one with the ones, and you have another with two, as you start to stretch the screen, the one with twos will grow twice as fast. And then if you have the two in for the shrink, it'll shrink twice as fast. But just amazing stuff as it, as it comes to responsiveness. Um, Self-align auto, this can take the place of align items top for an individual item. So for some reason, the third item in, I want to be lower on the screen. I can do that with this align self. And then minimum height attribute, 
This allows me to um, set any minimum height if I wanted. But again, I left everything auto on this because I wanted the content to drive the size of the, the divs or the sections. Um, with that, I want to know if there's any questions. Shoot. I did. I mean, all browsers, or at least I know Chrome does, has a print um, function in it. However, I didn't want to control what the client was able to print. So when you use the browser's print, you can't really control um, what's printed per se. And you know, if somebody's on a different browser, then I, their experience might be different. I felt, and you know, PayPal again was an inspiration. Theirs was within the app. I wanted something where. I could control that. And what I could deliver to them was the content I wanted to deliver, not necessarily the screen. Well, let's say maybe they did want to print the screen off and they wanted my navigation and everything else. I didn't want to, I didn't want to determine what the client could print. I just wanted to give them the option to get what they needed. If they wanted the invoice, here's just the invoice. All right, any other questions? Okay, one question for everyone then. I'm using content editable. I don't know how many of you have heard of that, but it is, um, it's a component that can be used. It does throw some warnings with React because it's uncontrolled, um, so you have to proceed at your own risk. But I felt, given the fact that I was controlling um, each one of those sections by storing that data in the database and then putting that back out on a re-render, that I was okay, so I suppressed those warnings. I'd like to hear from anybody else their thoughts on content editable. <laughs> Um, good, bad, I know it's somewhat new, so I'm not sure uh, its overall acceptance, but it does allow some pretty flexible um, editing of content. I tried um, inputs at first, but those you've got to write in CSS to hide all the, the lines around them. Text areas, you know, those don't auto um, calibrate to what's in there. They basically give you a little scroll bar, and so it almost just complicates the whole experience. But um, thoughts? Sounds like somebody needs to write a package to use inputs. <laughs> Anybody have any thoughts on that? How to use content editable with React? No thoughts? You know what? That did come up. Yes. Yeah, so and I just didn't have the time to read through it, but yeah. And they're using it in a controlled way, so they like they keep basically the, the representation of their state, right, is in memory, and then they just sort of flush that down to the concept of the state changes. So they intercept all the keystrokes, and those those things don't actually get to the DOM, uh, as far as I understand. They go and they manipulate the representation of memory, and they just sort of flush that to the DOM. So at every sort of step of the way, they're telling you. Interesting. But it's, it's been a long time since I've been on Props to you for using it actually making it work. It really is your only option. So. Well, that's kind of what I found. I really liked everything else about it. And you can suppress the warnings. The warnings, you know, just tell you to proceed at your own risk. You can suppress those. And I'm not really dealing with state at all. These are all um, stateless components. And so I thought, what's the harm? I'll suppress it and hope for the best. <laughs> But yeah, I was interested to hear any, anybody's feedback on that. So thanks, Michael. All right, everybody, give Paul a round of applause. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.